boys and girls. I'm cuddled up in my nice warm blanket um, on this rainy Friday. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Making this lesson for you today. And you might have wondered if your mom or dad or if you yourself read the title, what in the world I'm talking about today. Well, this is my little friend. This is Pingui. Pingui is Xander's little penguin. He really likes penguins a lot. And this morning when I was um, praying and reading the Word of God, for some reason I started thinking about penguins. Now, maybe it's because um, last week we watched a documentary on penguins um, on Disney Plus, I believe it was, um, that told a lot about penguins and their lives and everything. And, and I don't know, I just started thinking about uh, references to us as followers of Jesus. I'm going to put him right there. So I want to share with you some ideas about lessons we can learn from penguins. When I first did my first video, clear back in March, early March, middle March, for you for Bible class, we talked about some of the wonderful creatures that God had uh, created, like the um, uh, giant uh, shrimp um, that was so pretty and colorful, and we talked about the um, leafy sea dragons, and we talked about sloths. And so for the next few weeks, um, probably because we're probably going to be in for a couple more Sundays, maybe longer, uh, I'm going to talk to you about different animals and lessons that we can learn from these animals. And so today we're doing penguins. All right. So what can we learn from penguins? Well, first of all, Penguins have adapted to change. Now, we don't know when God first made penguins. Penguins are a bird. They're classified as birds because they have feathers. But penguins don't fly, right? Well, but back when God created them, we don't know. Maybe at first they did fly. But then they adapted um, to their different environments and they changed. Whatever the case... Um, penguins have been able to deal with change because they are not birds that fly. So they had to uh, adapt or change their way of surviving, uh, getting what they needed to live uh, with what they had. So they have very sleek bodies. Now this this one's a little fat one. This is like a baby penguin because when they're babies, they have this fuzzy gray fur on them. Um, but when they get to be adult penguins, they have very sleek bodies and they have large flippers. Those flippers help them to swim really, really fast. And they use them for their good. Um, they are the fastest and deepest divers of any birds. Did you know birds could dive? Um, penguins can dive really, really deep. One thing I read was like 300 feet. And they can hold their breath, certain ones can hold their breath for up to 20 minutes underwater. Now, think about that versus ducks or geese or swans that you may have seen on a pond or on a lake, and they might duck their heads down in the water to get their food, get fish, 
and krill and things like that, but they don't stay underwater, whereas penguins can do that. How does that apply to us? Well, we are in a time of change, aren't we? This has been a really, really different thing. You've never experienced, I've never experienced, a situation where you have had to be home from school, not go to school, be allowed to go to school, and not allowed to be with your friends and go to parks, not be allowed to participate in sports teams, all those things you haven't been allowed to do. How are you adapting or adjusting to that change? Are you allowing that change to make you grumpy and irritable and bitter? Or are you adapting to it well? Um, the first century Christians had to adapt to change. In the book of Acts, in chapter 8, in verse 1, it says this. A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem. This was after Stephen was um, martyred, killed, stoned. And all the believers except the apostles were scattered through the regions of Judea and Samaria. So they had persecution and they had to scatter. That means they had to leave their homes. They had to leave their what they were familiar with, um, their way of life. They had to leave jobs. Um, they had to leave stuff. They were scattered because they were being persecuted. Stephen was the start of that. But with that great persecution came the spread of the good news of Jesus to all different areas in the world. Just like today, what's going on with us, God can use it. If we think of different ways, different things that we can do to take this as an opportunity to grow closer to God, closer to our family, to let other people know that we appreciate them, that we're thankful for them, to look out for uh, our neighbors, get to meet them, maybe from a distance, of course, but um, if you haven't known them before, and, and be used by God to spread good news because people want good news right now they want to hear good news well back then they were spread scattered because they were persecuted but they used that opportunity to spread the good news of Jesus Christ so penguins adapt to change and we should be adapting to change Okay, the second thing is penguins care for each other. Um, most uh, penguins, when they uh, pick a mate, I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't say most, but many of them, when they pick a mate, um, penguins have to leave for periods of time to go to uh, farther away places to get their food. And when they do that, they're gone for an extended period of time. And when they come back, they go back to the same penguin. The majority of them do to mate. And they, many of them mate for life with the same penguin, okay? Also, they do another thing called huddle. Now you've heard the term huddle. Those of you that are football players or football fans, you know the term huddle. You get in a huddle um, and you talk about, you know, huddle up, the coach will say. Even in, even in other sports, basketball, baseball, soccer, the coach will say, huddle up. That means you get in a tight, close little group, right? Well, that's what the word is with penguins. 
they huddle together in big groups very close together in the coldest, coldest winter months to help care for each other because of the cold. That way they stay warmer. Well, we are supposed to care for each other in the body of Christ, in the church. Also in the book of Acts, if we go back and look at the first Christians in Acts 2.42, it says, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and to fellowship, and sharing meals together, and to prayer. And then in verse chapter 4, verse 32, it says, my pages are sticking together. Sorry about that. All the believers were united in heart and mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own, so they shared everything they had. So they were taking care of each other. Also in Romans chapter 12, verses 9 and 10, Paul tells us as Jesus followers, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tight to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. So we're supposed to put each other up, care about each other's feelings. Okay, the third lesson we learn from penguins is that they're diverse. I don't know if you realized how many different kinds of penguins there are. Now this is one you might be really familiar with. Emperor penguins. Emperor penguins live in the Antarctic. And all penguins, except those in zoos, live below the equator in the southern hemisphere. But emperor penguins and king penguins are two of the largest of the penguins. And they both live in the Antarctic where sub-zero temperatures happen, right? Very cold. Okay, then there are crested penguins. Crested. These live on islands, uh, the Chatham Island Islands and Sub-Antarctic Islands. Um, they, that is close to New Zealand. And of course, the reason for their um, name, they had a crest on their head. These specific ones, not all crested, but some of the crested ones are extinct now, the ones in the Chatham Islands. Then we have the chin strap penguin. Okay, now this would be easy to figure out why they gave this penguin the name chin strap, right? Because it has a black line that goes on its white fur um, that looks like a chin strap. Um, these penguins are found in Argentina and in the Antarctic, Chile, the Falkland Islands, the Sandwich Islands, which are off of um, South America, uh, and they are the most aggressive penguins, okay? They actually have two of these penguins in the New York City Bronx Zoo. And two of the penguins tried to hatch a rock. Uh, there's a story about them that was written called um, And Tango Makes Three. Um, if you want to find out about that story, uh, And Tango Makes Three, you can look, look up that book. Um, they normally lay two eggs and they take turns sitting on them to uh, keep them warm and then when they hatch they take care of both of the um, little uh, baby penguins which it just left me what they're called it's a different name i can't think of it right this minute okay then there's also yellow eyed and little blue penguins and these are both found in New Zealand, and uh, some of these are in Australia. 
and they are the smallest penguins. They are only about a foot tall or a little over a foot tall. So they're small penguins. Again, you can tell why they're called these names. The one obviously has yellow eyes and these have a kind of blue color to them, to their feathers. So the penguins are very diverse. There's all different kinds and that's just a few. That's not all of them. That's just a few that I looked up to share with you. We are diverse in the church. Um, we have all different um, people. We have black, white, um, Asian. We have brown skins. We have uh, men and women, boys and girls. We have all different kinds of occupations. And in scripture, um, that's a good thing. Paul mentions that in Romans chapter 12 and verse 6. He says, In His grace, God has given us each different gifts for doing certain things well. So God blesses each of us differently. We're not all the same. Um, let's read another scripture that talks about that. In 1 Corinthians 12, 14 through 17. Paul, again, writing to a church in the town of Corinth, he says to them, The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free, but we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share that same spirit. Yes, the body has many parts, because not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am the hand, does that make it not a part of the body? And if the ear says, I am not a part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if you, the, your whole body was an ear, how would you smell? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. And then Galatians chapter 3. I'll read you the Colossians one first because I turned there. Colossians chapter 3 also verse 11 says, in this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, slave or free, um, barbaric or civilized. Christ is all that matters, and he lives in all of us. And Galatians says basically the same thing, that there's no slave or free, Jew or Gentile um, in our day, we would say black or white, German or or Asian, or Chinese, or Indian, uh, uh, or Native American, or um, Arabic, but we are all one in Christ. It says in, Gen in Galatians 3.28, There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, you are all one in Christ Jesus. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing for us to be diverse. The fourth thing I learned when I was thinking about the penguins is they know their father or mother's unique calls. They have unique, specific, special sounds they make. And because of that, their chicks, that's what they're called, chicks, their chicks can recognize the voice of their parents and go to them. Did you know that God wants us to recognize his voice in our lives? Jesus said in uh, John, the book of John, he said, my sheep know my voice. God wants you to know him. That's the whole reason that he sent Jesus, 
was so that you would know him because through studying Jesus and through looking at God's creation and being in his word, we can know him and he wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to know us and he wants you to know him. The last thing is that penguins are focused. Okay, remember in the Finding Nemo movie, um, Dory says, just keep swimming, swimming. Okay, well, penguins do a lot of swimming. And the reason that they swim and swim and swim is to catch fish and fish and fish and more fish, okay? Because the ones who especially live where it's cold and gets super cold in the winter time in the Antarctic, the more they eat, the more fat they get. And the fat helps them to be insulated or protected or warmed from the heat. I mean, from the cold, sorry. The insulation keeps them warm. And so they swim and swim and eat and eat fish. Well, we are to be focused too. As followers of Jesus Christ, we're to be focused on him. I remember back when my youngest daughter was a teenager, there was a group and they did this little, um, I don't know what you call it, a uh, little improv thing where it was called focus on God, focus on God, focus on God. And we are to be focused on God and on sharing his good news with others. So we just keep swimming, 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 taking every opportunity that God gives us to shine his light and to share with others the good news with a smile, with a coloring picture, with a little note you might write, with a thank you card, um, with a treat that you leave on somebody's door, anything like that that you can think to do that shares God's love with others, pleases him so much. And, and that's why we're, our purpose is to glorify God and to be little Jesus's, little Christ, followers of Jesus, because that's what God wants and sent Jesus for. So let's review. Penguins adapt to change and so can we. Penguins care for each other and so should we. Penguins are diverse, so are we, and it's a good thing. Penguins know their father and mother, and we want to know our father, our father, our heavenly father. And penguins are focused. They swim and swim and swim, and we can read and read and read and study and sing and pray and get closer and closer so that we know God. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, lesson. And um, next time we'll do a different animal. I do have a story, that uh, a book that I have that kind of goes along with this lesson. Um, I will read that for Wednesday night if you want to uh, have a little lesson on Wednesday night. And I think we should all say thank you to Miss Pam and Miss Erin for um, sending out the neat uh, maze and uh, activity books that they sent out in the mail. Um, thank you. That was very, very nice. Um, God bless you. Have a great weekend. And keep looking to Jesus. Shine your light. This is the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Bye-bye.